Hello and welcome to the Howard Wright Know Your Money podcast. I'm Ashley Smith and I'm Tom Richards. On the Know Your Money podcast, we talk everything finance from financial related tips to how what's going on in the world around you affects the money in your wallet and most importantly, in your financial future. If this podcast helps you, please like and subscribe so we can help as many people as possible moving forward. In this episode, we're going to be talking about a recession. It's a word we're starting to hear more and more of in the UK and around the world. We want to help you, our listeners, understand more about what it really means. This is a topic which follows on from our last podcast, which discussed increasing interest rates. I think a useful starting point would be to recap some of the key points from this, Ashley. So, Ash, over to you. Thank you, Tom. In recent months, the UK, as well as many other countries around the world, have been experiencing high levels of inflation. This has led to many central banks and governments using policy, such as raising interest rates or reducing quantitative easing, which is printing of money, and also tightening spending in an effort to reduce inflation. The main objective of these measures is to reduce the ability or the desire for individuals or companies to spend, i.e. reduce demand. If demand reduces to meet the level of supply of goods or services, or even reduces below the supply, in theory, there should no longer be price increases. If demand falls below supply, you're likely to see the price reductions implemented to entice individuals and companies to buy products or services. Until again, there is parity between the supply and the demand. As Tom said, if you wish wish to listen to more uh, about this, please go back to episode four. That's brilliant. Thank you, Ashley. Um, Could you now explain what impact has this been having on the, the world economy in here in the UK? Yeah, so unfortunately, unfortunately, these measures, um, whilst they can be a good tool to control inflation, they can be quite negative for an economy. If less products or services are needed, less people then need to be employed to provide those goods or services. This can then lead to job losses and in turn, less demand. It creates quite a vicious circle. This ultimately has a, an impact on something known as gross domestic product or GDP for short. Gross domestic product then, uh, very simply, it's the monetary value of all of the goods and services bought within a country over a specific time period. If more goods and services are being bought than the previous year, the GDP figure goes up, and if less goods and services are being purchased, then the GDP figure goes down. Based on the measures being implemented by central banks and governments, as detailed earlier, uh, in an effort to try and combat inflation, You could reasonably expect then that GDP uh, will be lower um, than it was in previous years or even negative if less is being bought overall. Now here in the UK, for us to officially be in a recession, it means that we've had two consecutive quarters of negative GDP, i.e. two quarters where the total value of products or services being bought has reduced. Now officially at the time of recording this podcast, we're not in a recession. Uh, but many economists believe that we're not too far away from that, given the, the high inflation rates and the current central bank policies. That's brilliant. Thank you. So um, if we do enter a recession, um, what's in a government's toolkit um, which can be used to bring the economy out of a recession? OK, so very good question. Uh, historically, in order to combat recessions and promote growth within the economy, central banks and governments have aimed to stimulate those economies. There are multiple ways to do this, however, there's a couple which are quite prominent in that toolkit. So the first is cutting interest rate, Uh, second is reducing taxes, and the third is reintroducing what we call quantitative easing, which is quite simply printing money. These measures should increase people's disposable income um, and also then increase access to cheap debt, allowing people and companies more flexibility to spend on those non-essential goods. Uh, If people are able to spend more, um, then the country's GDP should increase. The concern with trying to stimulate an economy, however, certainly in today's environment, is that inflation, uh, which is already higher than we would like, uh, could get even higher. Uh, Again, there's another podcast on that if you want to go back and have a listen. The current environment then is adding to the global stock market volatility. Uh, If inflation data remains high and central banks or governments are tightening policy, whilst GDP is slowing or falling, this could increase the depth of a recession and see markets fall further. If, however, inflation data starts to fall, it reduces the need for that of those central banks to to tighten policy um, and increases the the chances of them actually stimulating the economy. That's great. Thank you. Um, Another question I've been hearing is um, investment markets, how do they perform in a recession and, and can they almost perform positively? 
Potentially, yes, they can. So as markets are forward looking, they could still perform well during a period of recession if the expectation is for, the, for stimulus to be introduced and ultimately for longer term growth um, within an economy. Trying to time markets, however, through that volatility is extremely difficult, if not impossible to do. Um, and we will explore that in future podcasts. Um, the best outcomes are usually achieved, however, just by utilising a portfolio with a level of risk that you're comfortable with um, and sitting tight and waiting for those poor periods um, uh, to sort of finish and wait, wait for that recovery um, to happen. If you'd like to discuss your finances, your future goals and objectives through these uncertain times, please contact myself or one of our charters advisors by the usual methods. Um, our links will be on the bottom of the podcast or you can go on our website www.heraldwright.co.uk. Thank you for listening to the Herald Wright Know Your Money podcast. I've been Ashley Smith. And I've been Tom Richards. If you're watching this on YouTube, please like and subscribe or share on the socials. And if you're listening to us on Apple Music or Spotify, drop us a follow and leave us a review really helps other people find the podcast and they're enabling them to know their money better and build stronger financial futures. Please also check out the Howard Wright link tree at the bottom of this video or podcast um, as there's lots of helpful tips, articles and videos which we think you'll really enjoy. And most importantly, stay, stay tuned, tuned for future episodes. This recording contains information from sources believed to be reliable, but no guarantee, warranty or representation expressed or implied is given to its accuracy. Howard Wright does not undertake any obligation to update or revise any future statements. Past performance is not a reliable indicator of future results. Investments can go down as well as up, and actual results could differ materially from those anticipated. This recording is for the information purposes only and has no regard to the specific investment objectives or financial situation of any individual. The information contained in this recording is not intended to constitute and should not be construed as investment or financial advice. Appropriate personalised advice should always be taken before entering into any transactions. No responsibility can be accepted for any loss arising from action taken or refrain from being taken based on this publication. Howard Wright is authorised and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority.